welcome to Christ Church. For those of you who are joining us online, you can download the bulletin by clicking the link in the comments. Being the season of Easter, we will begin slightly different than what the bulletin says. So I will say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. You'll say, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and more they magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not, have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple little things to start my sermon with. One, Reverend Katie is currently up helping with Children's Chapel, which means at the end of this sermon, I'm supposed to carry on the service. So if I don't start the Nicene Creed, somebody wave me down to start it. The second thing is, I'm not doing the same sermon I did at the 8 o'clock service, which had a feeling I should preach about something else. So instead of the sermon I prepared for all week, you get to instead get what I'm going to wing right now. You see, I was thinking, it's the first Sunday after Easter, it's a time of celebration, it's a time of joy, it's a beautiful day outside, it's the day of the parish picnic, it was a day I encouraged people to invite somebody to church, because, little side note, usually the Sunday after Easter is very low attendance, so my idea was everybody should invite somebody and we'll do the parish picnic. With all those great and joyous things, I thought today would be the perfect day to talk about sin. When I say that, some of you may get nervous. You may get nervous for a couple reasons. One, without casting any judgment on any other group, some of you may have heard people stand in a pulpit before and use sin as a way to bring about fear or guilt or shame. And I want to do the opposite today. And you may also, though, get nervous because you, in fact, are struggling with guilt or fear, or shame. As I talk to people nowadays, I don't feel as a pastor, I need to convince people that they're not perfect. I think the opposite is true. I need to show people instead they are loved and forgiven. Maybe in a different stage in the future, I'll need to focus more on the whole making people convicted of sin I've just come to realize that people know they're not living up to what they should be. So, in the season of Easter, we can actually, if we choose to, not do the confession in the service. It's an option, because it's a season of celebration, it's a time if you want to, you can take out the confession. And on Easter, we do. But it gives you, if you want to, you can do it between Easter and Pentecost. For that entire season, you could not do the confession. But I've always thought that was weird, and so we don't do that. Not because I need people to remember they are sinners, 
but because I want to stand before them and tell them instead they are forgiven. At the end of the confession we do every Sunday, a priest stands up in front of you and tells you that you're forgiven. It's not about the confession for me. The confession leads to what we call the absolution, the declaration of forgiveness. The gospel should leave people released and feeling free, not with further burdens. People have enough burdens of their own. So today, today's gospel story. So there's this guy named Thomas. He's been with Jesus this whole time. They heard here Jesus talk about his, the fact that he was going to die and be risen from the dead many, many times. And when the disciples are all gathered still in fear that the religious leaders are going to come and get them too, or that the Romans would come and get them too, Jesus shows up to them to give them peace, it says. Jesus showed up so that he could tell them, I'm giving you peace, and to get them to work. Except Thomas was getting a newspaper at the time, or something. He wasn't there. And when he comes back, his ten best friends say, we saw Jesus, he rose from the dead. And then Thomas says, nope. It didn't happen. Unless I personally see it. Unless I put my hands in the holes in his hands and the hole in his side, that's the only way I'll believe. So a week later, Jesus shows up. And there's two ways this story could have happened. There's one way that happens in the gospel, and I'll get to a second, but there's another way. Jesus could have showed up and said, Thomas, why don't you have any faith? I told you I was going to rise from the dead. Your friends told you I rose from the dead, and yet you wouldn't believe, and you had the audacity to demand that I show up and show you myself. That I show up and show you the wounds, I show you my side. How dare you, Thomas, get out. You're not good enough. Sometimes we feel like that's what we think should have happened. Or I think some people have a vision of God that that's how God sees them. You're not good enough, so get out. But that's not what Jesus does. Jesus shows up and does the exact thing that Thomas needed to bring him in, to show him that he is loved. He comes and says, you need to see him? Here they are. Come on. You want to put your hand here? Come on. It must have been a weird moment, right? Where he's like, I don't really, that was something I said, Jesus. But Jesus shows up to do just that and then gets Thomas to work in the same way he got the rest of them to work. Jesus didn't come out to show judgment. Jesus showed out to show forgiveness and grace and to tell Thomas, despite his lack of faith, there was room for him, that he was loved and that he was welcome. The passage we have today from 1 John, it says, If any man, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So let's pause for a second. Sin is, the way I define sin, is sin are those things that we do that hurt ourselves and hurt other people. They can be states of mind, they can be actions, they can be neglect. There can be lots of ways that we fall short. And the Bible tells us very clearly that everybody sins and falls short of the glory of God. Everybody is not yet fully what God wants us to be. We're all in that same boat, which is why at this church, when we do the confession, we use we language. We don't use you language, which would be terrible, right? You need to confess. We also don't use our I language, which would also be true. We use we language because we acknowledge that everybody in this room is in the same position. We are all falling short of what God wants us to be. We all do things that hurt ourselves and other people. And many of us are walking around with a weight that we carry because of that. A guilt or a shame that we are not what we should be. That we are not enough. And some people feel that they are not lovable or forgivable. That all that good news stuff is for other people, the good people. So in 1 John it says, if, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, right? If we say that we're not in that state, we're wrong. But the next part says, but if we confess our sins, he who is faithful, faithful means he who is going to do what is the right thing to do, which is both a combination of this story of Jesus and God, 
If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. It doesn't leave us, if anybody says that you sin, then you are a liar. It doesn't stop there. It goes on to say, but, but, but if you confess, if you turn to the source of love and forgiveness, you will be cleansed fully. See, the Bible tells us that once we are forgiven, we are a new creation. And it doesn't mean that our actions don't have consequences. And it doesn't mean that we should continue doing those things that hurt ourselves and other people. We should strive to be the person that God created us to be. But any time that we ask forgiveness, we are a new creation. And there's nothing that God can't forgive. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so our sins are from the mind of God. Or else where it says... For there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. There's nothing you can do that would make you outside of what God wants for you. Which is why I know that after we do the confession, I can stand up and do the absolution. I know I can do that, not because I have any power to forgive sins, but because I know that whenever somebody turns to God, what happens is they are a new creation. If they felt on the outside, they are brought in. If they feel unlovable, they are loved that they are worthy, that they are beloved children of God. I think many people walk around with this guilt, even people who know the truth, even people that know that fundamental truth. If I'm honest, I'm one of these people who walk around sometimes, instead of focusing on all the ways that God has given me his new start, I will think about all the ways I have fallen short. I will see my life as the collection and the sum of all my mistakes. Even those who say they're followers of Jesus struggle with this very fundamental truth. It is hard for us to ourselves release the guilt and shame we feel over what we do. But the truth is so very clear and radical that we are forgiven. That you are a new creation. That I and you and everybody else you encounter is a beloved child of God. And what they are is not what they have done. So I stand up here today to talk about sin. Not that you would feel shame or fear or guilt but that you would feel forgiven and loved and free. For if anyone confesses their sin, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. And we will be made new. So if you're carrying any of those things, any guilt or shame or burden, this first Sunday after Easter would be a great time for you to set it down and leave it behind and walk into a new day as the beloved child of God that you are. Amen. See, I told you I was going to do that. Please stand. <laughs> Joy with me as we affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray especially for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives and all who remember and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for Betty, Phil, Seal, Chuck, Don, Elaine, Frankie, Gail. Jandy, Joan, Joel, John, Lenora, Marion, Mary, Ella, Eli, Gigi, Kelly, Kim, Rob, Rusty, Sharon, Tracy, and all others we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Nan James, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty, eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Is ourselves, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Invite you to have a seat. All right. 
First of all, if you're a visitor today, I'm so glad you joined us for worship. I'm so glad you joined us on this. Today we have our big parish picnic. Um, a couple things. First, if you could fill out the Connect card in front of you so we can say thanks for coming. And you can just drop it in the collection plate as it comes around. Also, I want you to know as we come up for communion, you're welcome to join us. At our church, nobody has to, but everybody's welcome. And at works, it's when it's your rose turn, you'll come up to the altar rail, and we fill from the inside to the outside. And you'll stand or kneel at the rail, take a piece of the bread, and either consume the bread and take a sip from the chalice, or hold on to the bread and tink the wine. Or some people choose to take the bread only, and when the wine comes across, they just cross their arms like this. If you'd like to come up, but you'd rather not take communion, you can cross your arms like this, and a priest will do a blessing instead of communion. And at this church, we do have gluten-free wafers. Instead of going like this, you cross your one arm like this, and we'll do a communion of gluten-free wafer instead. Now, as I mentioned, we, today is the day of the Andrew Parish picnic. Now, you may be thinking, eh, I don't know if I'll stick around. I hope you will, regardless of whether this is your first time or your 700th time at this church. Um, we just gather together for a meal. Now, because we don't have a kitchen, we have the whole thing catered, so City Catering is doing it, and we're doing it in the Curran Center. Um, the kitchen is under construction and part of all of that we're doing around the church. So the easiest way to get there is you cross the street out of these front doors, go to the right, and then you'll see people guiding you in that's to your left. So again, cross the street here, go to the right, and you'll get there. There's a playground and stuff and games and stuff for the kids. There'll be lots and lots of food. So I hope you'll stick around and join us for lunch. Um, uh, two quick things I want to point to that are coming up in two weeks. That's April the 21st. First of all, we have confirmation that Sunday. So the bishop will be with us for his Episcopal visit at the 1030 service. And we have, it's exciting to me, we have the best confirmation class this week. We have 28 people in it, a great mix of, of, of youth and adults. It's going to be an awesome day. So that's going on in the morning. And that afternoon at at five o'clock we have choral evensong now if you've never been to choral evensong you're wrong and you need to go to choral evensong it is a wonderful expression of our faith that the choir does and we participate with and it's beautiful music it is art on its own and it's also prayer and so we do them regularly you should come but this one in particular is going to be special because it is remembering and the, the whole event is done in remembrance of ken carradine who died now several years ago or a year ago gosh when was it a while ago, Ken was the organist here at this church for 40 years, and it's a way for us to honor him. And we'll also be, between now and then, installing, and then at that service, dedicating the marble plaque that will be put up in the church to remember him and his ministry. So again, that's not next Sunday, but the next one on the 21st at 5 o'clock. And if you know somebody who loves good music, invite them to join you for, uh, for Coral Evensong and the reception that follows. All right, let's continue now with our offertory sentence. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. A night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that they may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to do temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take the remembrance that Christ died for you. Be them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. didn't want y'all going over and waiting to eat before the prayer, so we're going to pray for the food right now. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this food we're about to eat, the fellowship of the people who are Christ Church, and for the many blessings in our lives. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.